Okay, so we are going to embark on the lens replacement for the Atom Stack. This is the, it's from my X7 Pro. So this is the 10 watt, uh, you can see M50 is the module. And let's see, there's right there on the side, it's also labeled the M50 GY. Uh, but like many other users, I have uh, now experience the dreaded uh, lens crack issue. It may be a little hard to see, but it's kind of split there in the middle. So we're going to attempt to take this out. And uh, I did order some lenses. I'll link those below. So hopefully we'll be able to, uh, to get this done. So I've already removed uh, the cone. This is the stock cone. I did have a uh, 3D printed air assist nozzle on there. And I think that might be part of what caused the problem because as I was doing a tumbler engrave, um, it, uh, that 3D printed nozzle got hot. It actually melted closed and all of a sudden I had no light emitting from my laser anymore. And I thought, well, uh, my diodes are dead, but it wasn't that. It was just the fact that it had completely closed up the hole there. So this is one of the Allen wrenches that comes with it. Uh, you remove those, take the cone out. The next, this is a, I believe a 1.5 millimeter uh, Allen screw. This will let, if you loosen this screw here on the side, this will allow you to remove uh, the safety glass or this, this is what protects your eyes. So we're going to take that out because <clears throat> that's pretty fragile. And the first thing that we have to do is to remove this. Now I have, uh, I gave it just a quick, um, grabbed it with the pliers and tried to uh, spin it off and it did not want to come. And I looked online, uh, saw some other people that talk about heating it up. So I'm going to give that a shot. Um, I've got a, a heat gun here. It's 1500 watt heat gun from Harbor Freight. So we're just going to, apply a little bit of heat. I don't want to do too much because, well, I don't want to damage anything else, but we're going to give this a go. First off, let me uh, preface this with saying that you want to be extremely delicate in the repair of this. And you don't want to make the same mistakes that I did. And I'll tell you where I went wrong first of all. So this cap covers the laser module. This is the laser module that I've taken out of, of this. This is the case that this all fits in. Everything is out of here now. But the laser module, you're going to see this is kind of destroyed. But I think we're going to get it working again. So this cap goes on here. My first inclination is uh, I took everything apart and I tried to loosen this and it did not want to go. So I went online, I read about it, and they said, oh, just heat it up a little bit. So I got out my heat gun, did some uh, heating up of it, and then I grabbed the pliers and I started turning. Well, obviously this is... Uh, brass or copper so it's a very soft metal you can probably see the marks that I put in this just from uh, even though I tried initially to get uh, I put some some rubber around it so that the pliers wouldn't bite in there too hard but I couldn't get a good grip because I still had it in the housing here um, and when you when all you've got is that little area to work with it makes things a little bit challenging so um, Put the pliers on there and started uh, cranking on this thing and eventually started turning and that's when I realized uh, That this is just the sleeve you can see the you can see the threads in there So I think when I did that when I started put it, putting the pressure with it the pressure on it with the pliers I probably slightly bent uh, this out of circle or out of true and 
I spent the next several hours trying to get the lens out of here. You can see there's all these there's all these little notches. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and unscrew this. This took a lot of work. It doesn't come out that easy, or at least it didn't for me. So I don't know if you'll be able to see all the little notches that are in there, but the lens is is actually at the very back, the back of this. So that's the that's the we'll say the kind of the focusing lens. It takes that laser beam and, and gets it down to that very pinpoint um, so that it can do the work. Well, I ground down tools. I was trying everything to, uh, to be able to unscrew these little rings in here, and I just could not do it. So that got me to thinking. I had already, uh, I had already purchased the what I thought was the replacement lens and now I gotta there there it is it's hiding over here I went online on the on the Facebook group and somebody said hey the Atom Stack is now selling these replacement lenses um, and so I followed the link and I got these you know I ordered them and I was like great it was like $30 for three lenses I'm like hey that's not too bad $10 a lens I'll have two uh, replacements so sweet I got these in and I looked at it and I and, you know, initially, um, I'm like, well, it's going to be a heck of a time to get these things out. But anyway, as I'm looking through this, I'm noticing that there's really no change, you know, optically. It's like a piece of glass. And I said, that's probably, I, I'm a little bit worried. I feel like this isn't going to do the job, but I could definitely tell that my lens was cracked on the inside. So after going through all this work and not being able to get this out, I was like, well, maybe this is, you know, maybe it's just makes such a small change that I, I'm not being able to see it. And I'm just going to kind of throw caution to the wind. And so as this whole, uh, you know, unit was still together, I basically just took this bit and then started wrapping on it until I cracked the lens. Uh, even more and broke it into pieces and that's what you see left here i thought well just putting this in in place isn't going to do the trick if i still have the broken lens in place that's absorbing energy and heating up and you know causing problems so i'm like i got to get the old one out there i'll put the new one in so i did that put the new one in fired it up again and of course it it really did not focus uh at all so back to the drawing board well, I went back online, uh, started doing some more uh, looking around, and I found that uh, Adam Stack does, in fact, sell. This is uh, this is actually for the, I think, X20. Um, so it's a different laser module, and this is essentially just kind of a, I don't know, an anti-reflective glass window. It's coated. Uh, so this is not originally on the X7 and probably not needed now you can go on aliexpress and buy this piece with the lens in it and it uh i'm not exactly sure how i managed to do it but i had a 30 dollar off coupon like 30 30 dollars off 30 dollars and one cent or more coupon to aliexpress maybe it's because i bought these i don't know but Essentially, I got, I think I got a, uh, a two pack of these for $30, but with all the savings and everything and, you know, shipping and tax and anything, it cost me like five bucks to get these replaced. So I've got that coming. It should be here in a week or two. Um, oh. of course I'll, to get this out, what I ended up having to do because I, I tried twisting it. I tried again with the, uh, you know, putting some putting some rubber on it and putting vice grips around it. Now that I had the whole module out, it, you know, I had a lot more ease to work and still could not uh, go. You can see that the, the rubber is all, this is where I was spinning it around on here. It was tearing up the rubber. I'm a little worried. Obviously you don't want to get anything in there. So I'll probably need to, uh, 
do a little bit of cleaning, but hopefully we don't run into too many problems with that. Um, but anyway, so what I needed to, what I ended up doing is I just took a uh, drill bit and I drilled through uh, this piece here, and then I just got a, this punch, put it in there, and that gave me enough leverage that I was able to take this off. You can see that I don't, uh, I'm not sure if that's a glue or if it's just something like a thread sealer or Loctite, um, but that was essentially what I had to overcome uh, to get this off. So this is threaded. So these, when I get the new lens assembly in, uh, this will simply screw back in to the laser. This is where both the two light laser diodes are and the uh, mirrors and such to uh, align those. But So that's where I'm at now. We'll get the new piece in. Um, once I have that, this, I don't want to screw it in because I'll mess up the threads, but this does actually fit in here. It will thread on and then this piece will still go over all of it. So I'll see about, see if I want to put this back on. Um, I'm not sure if you can see just running it for a few seconds. It, it did kind of frost up this window a little bit and that may be because it wasn't terribly focused. So I'll clean this. I have two more of these, uh, but we'll see if, if that's something that I want to uh, put in put in the path of the beam. It would, in theory, keep this lens, uh, the, the actual focusing lens, it would keep this clean. It would keep smoke from getting off of this or getting onto this and then causing that lens to heat up and crack. So, and this is a lot easier to replace because it sits on the front. Uh, it sits on the front section of this guy. So that sits there and then this goes over both of them. So um, eventually we'll see how this all goes back together, but uh, we'll keep you posted. And uh, until then, uh, this is now available on AliExpress. I ordered it, it probably took, I wanna say somewhere uh, less than two weeks to receive the lens. It comes from China, you can see I selected. So the Atomstack X7 Pro is a 10 watt optical output laser diode. So they do sell both the 10 watt and the 20 watt lens and they are different. Uh, so you gotta make sure that you select the 10 watt version if you have the X7 Pro. So this is how it comes packaged. Um, they seem to use the same packaging for a lot of the things. Uh, I ordered the lens covers by accident and they came in the exact same box. They were just slipped in here. I got three for like $30. Um, but this is how they ship you the lenses. So again, I want to say it was $39.99. Somehow I was able to get some a coupon that took like $30 off of it. Um, or, and then I had some other coupon. It ended up costing me like $6. Don't ask me how. But So these are the lenses. So now I actually do have a backup. Uh, and this is what you get if you order the link uh, from the link below. So... And the if you can get that out, and again, I, I want to reiterate, do not use any, I would, man, I would not even use any metal tools. Um, heat it up, do whatever you can to try and break. It looks like, you know, this is the original one. Uh, there is, there's a bit of thread lock on there or glue or something. That's what was holding this in. Because obviously you don't want it to, to, uh, get loose but so the new one I don't want to make sure I don't cross thread this at all it is a little bit uh, it's a little bit tough and I don't I'm know working through this and just to give you an idea of what I'm doing to rectify this situation um, I'm just using some uh, this is 91% isopropyl alcohol and I've just been kind of cleaning these threads here. Uh, so there's a little bit of glue from the last one. So I'm just, um, I've been using pretty moderate pressure to get into the grooves here with the alcohol. Obviously that's not what I'm doing at the moment because I'm just trying to show you. So putting, uh, working the alcohol in there, you do have to be pretty careful because there's a, there's a combiner mirror here that combines the two diodes and 
Um, there's not a lot I can do to clean that off. I really don't want to stick anything in there and uh, mess with the coatings. But so I've just been working on that, uh, working on those threads, getting some of the glue, breaking it down, and then screwing on the lens. And as you can see, it's, you know, every time I screw it on and screw it off, it just, it kind of breaks loose some of that glue. This should be, there should not be a gap between the body and the bottom of the lens. That's how it was originally. If there is, it's going to change the focal distance and then um, it could affect the cutting ability. And you'd obviously have to use a different uh, focusing device than the card that came with it. So I'm going to just keep working on that until I get it. So I've been able to work it and I've now got it uh, to where I can screw this all the way down so that it's flush with the base and it really doesn't take, you can see it's just, now it's just finger tight. I'm not going to, I'm actually not going to glue it. I'm not that worried about it coming loose. Uh, if it does, I can always tighten it. And should I need to replace this again, I certainly don't want to have to uh, go through the headache that I did before. So like I mentioned, the original, um, my original, well, this is the original model, but originally it did not have this little cover lens. And I don't know if that's something that they added in the future or in a subsequent versions. I'm guessing it's got to be a little bit different because um, this does not have what I'm guessing are these top threads here for the, oh no, it does. Never mind. This is just like the one that I ordered. So this screws on the inside, so I'm not going to put it on there. But uh, again, I originally did not have this. So there you can see that's the actual lens uh, that cracked on mine. This one looks really good. No cracks. And then this little window um, should help keep things off of that lens. And uh, you can clean this a lot easier. And now I, I do have three of these that I can... I can use to replace this should I need to. So anyway, so that is the actual uh, lens replacement. And now I just have to reassemble this thing. So the first thing that has to happen is this goes uh, back into the body. There's the body in midway down. And when I take the screws off in the back, you can see where there is uh, thermal paste. And that just helps to transfer the heat that's generated by this module uh, to the rest of this because this aluminum housing acts as a big heat sink. That's why there's all these fans. And then obviously you have the, the built-in fan to cool the electronics and primarily to cool down uh, this module. So I've got some thermal paste uh, that I'll be using uh, for that here. And so that is the next step. This panel is held on with four Phillips screws. Need a better screwdriver. So we're going to take these out. So that's the panel. You can see there's uh, some residual um, thermal paste there. And then this is the slot that it goes into. So I'm going to go ahead and clean this up and then uh, put the diode uh, module back in. So we're going to apply just a little bit of thermal uh, paste. I am using, this is just, um, I'll put a link below to something like this or similar. This is Arctic Silver. It's used for uh, CPUs from last time I built a computer so it doesn't take a lot um, I'm just gonna put a little bit down here and we'll put a little bead on the side so the module is gonna push this around when it slides in
And basically all this does is it fills in the air gaps to transfer heat. Now, the module really only fits in one way. And when you get it in, the lens should be in the center of the box. If you put it in upside down, it's not gonna be in the center. So as you can see there, it's centered. If you did it the other way, your lens is way over here, so you know you got it backward. So we're gonna go ahead and push this in, and now it is it's hitting that thermal paste, and it's just gonna kind of smear it along and fill in those gaps, which is exactly what we want it to do. And then it'll hit a natural stop. And you can see that back down here is where it was originally. They put some glue in there just to hold everything in and hold the wires down. And now we've hit that, uh, hit that. And there, it's also, there's a backstop to that channel. So that's that. And then we're going to add a little bit more here. And with this stuff, you don't need a lot. A little goes a long way. Because again, you can actually have too much. And it becomes a thermal insulation instead of a filling in those gaps. So that's probably more than enough. And then we will replace this plate and then that is going to again smear all of that thermal compound and we're filling in all those air gaps I think I would have learned the first time So yes, this is going to be a long video, and I thought about doing it, you know, time lapse, but honestly, uh, if I were having to replace my cracked lens, and I went on YouTube and found a video, I'd want as much detail and information, I don't care if it's a 45 minute long video, I'd want to see all the steps, and not something that was sped up just for the sake of keeping shorts, I want to know all the, the little problems that somebody else has had so I don't have to make them. So there we go. We got that in. So I'm going to go ahead. Actually, I'll leave that on until I uh, put on the uh, cover and then put in my air assist. And I'll talk about the air assist in a little bit here. So one thing I want to point out when you're putting this all back together since most of the, most people, um, and honestly, you don't have to take this thing all the way apart to, to change the lens. So when you're putting this back together, if you take this, uh, take this apart, there is a notch here that is cut out. Set that down. Right here, there's a notch that's been cut out of the fan. So you can see it's square, but right here, there's a notch, and that notch has been cut out for the diode laser wiring. So when you put this back together, the fan is gonna go in first, and you can see they've cut out this little spot here to kind of hold the wire. Fan's gonna go in first, and it goes label side down, and it's gonna get past that wire, and then it's already connected here to the circuit board, and then this is going to get put back in. So let's see if I can work this through. So you can see the fan is going to go all the way down. So now the fan's there, that's when you, now we're gonna, we gotta deal with these uh, spacers, so those all have to go in. And the reason these are just such a pain is because you've got 
two sets of them that have to all get lined up as you put each screw through. So we're gonna, we'll cut back, cut back to this once I get it uh, together. But I wanted to make sure that I pointed out that notch uh, because if you don't put this in right, you're gonna be fighting that and your wires aren't gonna line up and they're gonna get pinched and it's just gonna be uh, somewhat of a nightmare. Okay, so I just, I put those, I put the spacers in there and then just uh, gently got them each uh, lined up as I kind of wiggled the circuit board around. Uh, they are still, they're prone to slipping, so you just want to make sure that you've got them all lined up uh, as best you can. And then in my case, I, the next step for me is to replace the, uh, I took off the original, that clear plastic piece that went over this. Uh, because I 3D printed uh, this Z, Z axis screw. So that's going to go in. It's got the uh, notch there for the connector. And then um, I run an air assist tube. Uh, and that's going to go uh, in there as well. One more thing to look out for when you're, if you, if you get to this level of a tear down and rebuild, is this is your, your hold down screw. So as I, after, as I was getting it all back together, I noticed that uh, the hole wasn't clear. So looking back here, where this is supposed to pop out, I could see these wires from the laser diode. Um, and so I had to take it all back apart. Sure enough, you can see that this goes right over there. And that's why they glue those wires to the side of the wall uh, to keep them out of the way of the screw. It's definitely not the... Uh, most wonderful design because you've got this metal screw with those nice sharp threads that are going right over those wires um, which could uh, short them out so I'm gonna just uh, hot glue that back into place and uh, cover those up so hopefully that doesn't become an issue but uh, yeah keep an eye on that don't let that happen to you because that could uh, definitely ruin your day Eureka, that is a success. So after uh, getting all of those to line up, now we can take these down. Now we are on our way. I think I've had this unit now for just about a year because I ordered it, I want to say around Black Friday of 2021. It's been a pretty good unit. It's got its ups and downs, but uh, overall I'm pretty happy with, with it. Now I will say that uh, diode lasers definitely have their limitations and I have upgraded to a CO2 laser, which is much more expensive and much larger and it's out in the garage if you're following my channel you'll see a lot of uh, work with that and oh I'm like huh? so there we have got that back together we need to reinstall our laser diode. That guy 
guy is gonna go right back. And I probably don't even need the pliers. Go right back in there. So that is reinstalled. Those wires inside the unit so they don't end up rubbing on anything. There we go, so that is back. Okay, so I've got my air assist pipe uh, back installed uh, since it uh, can kind of free float. Um, I just put a little bit of hot glue on there. I found out I can't put this back in. There's just not enough space for that and the window. And I definitely need uh, my safety window in here. So we are going to make sure that everything works together. And this goes in with the rounded side up. And you do have to be careful not to tighten this too much. So I'm kind of pushing right in there up against my hot glue mess. And then it's just a 1.5 millimeter uh, set screw. Whoops. That's the 1.5 millimeter screw. And you definitely don't want to tighten this too much because you'll crack the glass. So there we go. And we should be back in business. So let's get the machine out and see if, uh, see what happens. So there you go. All right, we are now in the testing phase. We've got light burn running, and we're gonna try and execute a quick uh, test to see how well the new lens is performing. It would appear that uh, it is. Working like it used to. See, we've got nice tight lines there, and uh, yeah, I would say uh, this is a success, and we are now back in business. So awesome! Hope you uh, enjoyed the video. Please, if you uh, enjoy what I'm doing, like and subscribe, and that will help me out in the future, and we'll uh, be bringing more videos to come.